What are Indigenous Protected and Conserved Areas, or IPCAs? Indigenous Protected and Conserved Areas, or IPCAs, are lands and waters where Indigenous governments have the primary role in protecting and conserving ecosystems through Indigenous laws, governance, and knowledge systems. Culture and language are the heart and soul of an IPCA. IPCAs isn't something that the provincial or federal government is going to try to do to Indigenous peoples. IPCAs, uh, Indigenous Protected and Conserved Areas, are a tool that's available for Indigenous governments, for Indigenous nations to um, forward their own biodiversity protection and promotion objectives. Um, IPCAs uh, can only work if it's uh, self-determined by Indigenous peoples themselves. We Rise Together, the report released by the Indigenous Circle of Experts in 2018 as part of the Canada Pathway to Target One process, identifies three essential elements of IPCAs. They are Indigenous-led, they represent a long-term commitment to conservation, and they elevate Indigenous rights and responsibilities. Because Indigenous peoples have been caring for their lands and waters since time immemorial, all Indigenous nations would have areas within their territories that could qualify as IPCAs. There are currently upwards of 40 declared IPCAs across Canada. Some are well known and illustrate the range of models available. Tlaoquiet Nation established their first tribal park in 1984 making it one of the first IPCAs in Canada. It is much, much older than that. It is just the modern articulation or the current articulation of what our ancestors have always done. And we have an intergenerational relationship with the lands, the waters, the air, the spirit of the place. Um, we have a responsibility towards it. Um, that is what enshrines any rights that we may have um, and there are roles and responsibilities, ecological roles and responsibilities that have been carried out by our families for millennia. So the Indian certainly has a long, long and deep history uh, with our people. This is a good Dene, a place that we've been uh, managing for since time immemorial. So we have a huge territory with it comes huge responsibility. We initiated this because of our responsibility. It's important to understand that Tusave was the leader in this whole process. It was choices that we made and that led to the relationship we have now. It is a relationship agreement. And that relationship recognizes the authority that Tusege has to maintain a relationship with Saitin and Nene and anyone else that has an interest in Saitin and Nene. Since the work of the Indigenous Circle of Experts in 2018, new innovative models of IPCAs are being established in landscapes that have been heavily modified, as well as areas that are more densely populated. For instance, the Nova Scotia Mi'kmaq are creating a Mi'kmaq land trust to secure and protect private land holdings and build new relationships with Crown governments and environmental organizations to help establish IPCAs across the province. What are the benefits of IPCAs? A modern manifestation of traditional teachings, the heart of an IPCA is culture and language. Many IPCAs are also created through the assertion of Indigenous laws and governance. Through IPCAs, Indigenous nations and governments can regain control of their traditional territories. They represent an opportunity to reinvigorate the spirit and intent of the original peace and friendship treaties. IPCAs can also help create new sustainable conservation economies.
There's been significant amount of evidence that indigenous lead protected areas are more effective even on pure conservation values. So like in terms of protecting biodiversity and species, uh, never mind the co-benefits of, <clears throat> of nation building and of economic value and social and cultural revitalization, just on conservation benefits. They're more effective than state led protected areas. That healing, that reconciliation uh, between us as peoples is essential to not only objectives associated with uh, justice, but it's only then that we can talk to each other. It's only then that we can take 10,000 years of baseline data on how to live on this land and bring that and work together to heal ourselves and the land. The transformative change that we're talking about and that's influenced and, and led by and embedded in uh, our traditional knowledge, our, our traditional knowledge, our indigenous knowledge and practices and ways of knowing is about abundance, practicing abundance. Uh, and that's what's so exciting about uh, indigenous protected and conserved areas is it can be the tool that every nation needs it to be. In this new era of diplomacy, and in light of Canada's commitment to protect biodiversity, 30% by 2030, Indigenous nations have the opportunity to put forward their own goals and visions for their lands and waters to protect and enhance their culture, language and traditions. <laughs>